Lord Jesus Christ really gives us some good advice in the Sermon on the Mount when he says, Judge not, that ye be not judged. I think that is especially true for those judges who don't really care about the Constitution, precedent, moral standard, but are guilty of judicial activism, and they rule arbitrarily according to political correctness, economic pressure, special interest groups, or foreign precedent. And now, do we have to depend on government to define for us what marriage is? Doesn't even biology teach us about the different genders, male and female, and does not the wisdom of the ages teach us that marital fidelity is the only sustainable way for a society to be functional? Jesus tells us it is wrong to judge after the flesh in John 8, 15, but he tells us to judge what is right. We got to ask ourselves what's right in the sight of God. Check this out in Luke 12, verse 57. So what does God tell us is right? Well, let me give you an idea as far as the issue of marriage is concerned. Let's check out 1 Corinthians 7, verses 2 and 3. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. A husband does not need a husband, and a wife does not need a wife. Man and woman were made to complement each other or else there is something fundamentally wrong. It was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. It was Abraham and Sarah, not Abraham and Sam. It was Isaac and Rebekah, not Isaac and Richard. It was Jacob and Rachel, not Jacob and Raymond. It was Mary and Joseph, not Mary and Josephine. Jesus is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride, male and female. And look at Song of Solomon. It describes in vivid terms the love between a bridegroom and his bride, male and female, not any other way, not any other gender, not any other lifestyle. Male and female mate for each other to complement each other in a covenant relationship for life and not just for five weeks, seven years, and no easy divorce. None of that. Marriage has been set up in order to avoid fornication. Sexual sin leads to exploitation, abuse, violence, and the total collapse of society. I don't want any of that. That's why I defend traditional marriage. And here's really my pledge. Whereas the institution of marriage as a sacred union between one man and one woman has been a primary building block for every successful society in recorded human history, a shared institution across all continents, cultures, races, and religions, whereas research shows that married people are happier, healthier, and less of a burden on society, and that it is vitally important for children to have both a mother and a father present in their lives. Whereas traditional marriage has been overwhelmingly upheld by 50 million voters at the ballot box in the States, whereas we have witnessed an avalanche of retributive actions taken upon those who believe in marriage as the union of one man and one woman in places where marriage has already been redefined. Whereas activist federal judges, you know, the judge not thing here, whereas federal activist judges have improperly overturned state marriage laws and imposed a genderless version of marriage in contravention of the wishes of state voters. Therefore, I am steadily, steadfastly resolved to resist any attempt to redefine marriage, to roll back laws redefining marriage wherever they have been enacted, and to defend the religious liberties of citizens in places where marriage has already been redefined. So I don't need government to define for me what marriage is. Nobody needs that. I know that marriage is a covenant between one man and one woman. Anything else, by definition, is not marriage, even if a judge arrogantly rules to call it that way. No judge can rule an apple to be a banana. No judge can rule a mouse to be an elephant. 
A ruling by an earthly judge cannot change the things that are naturally so and that are by nature immutable. It is our destiny to accept God's design for us. We are not the designers. We are the clay. We are not the potter. The Bible says, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that thou repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Why would anybody reply against God? I think we are inviting God's judgment on our nation when we shake our fist at Him and say, We know better than you as to what constitutes a marriage. I pray God's mercy on our generation that has such a prideful, arrogant attitude to think that we have the audacity to define what marriage is about. I am very much supportive of the family, the biblical definition of the family unit. We thank God for the way He made us. We must strengthen families. We must stay the course, especially now when it might not be popular with everyone. But thank the Lord we live in a country where we can share our values and operate on biblical principles. No matter what a court rules, sin is still sin. Good is still good, and evil is still evil. I mean, you might want to check out in your Bible, Isaiah 5, verse 20. It talks about those that call evil good and good evil. But it simply is not so. You can't change the standard that has been set up by God. There is a court yet higher in authority than a supreme court. Did you know that? We all shall give an account. One day books will be opened and this world will be judged in righteousness. And the one who can now be our Savior will then be the judge, Jesus Christ. Let's not get too excited about what a Supreme Court will judge. There is another judgment day coming uh, when the right will win. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, where it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment the U.S. Constitution has nothing to say about the definition of marriage. So the Supreme Court is the wrong address for seeking a proper definition of marriage. But I looked in Webster's American Dictionary from back in 1828 and listen to what I found. Marriage. From to marry, from marry a husband. Um, and it says here, the act of uniting a man and woman for life. Wedlock. The legal union of a man and woman for life. Marriage is a contract both civil and religious by which the parties engage to live together in mutual affection and fidelity till death shall separate them. Marriage was instituted by God himself for the purpose of preventing the promiscuous intercourse of the sexes, for promoting domestic felicity, and for securing the maintenance and education of children. And it says here, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Hebrews chapter 13. Another definition for marriage is a feast made on the occasion of a marriage. And it gives an example verse here, which says, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who made a marriage for his son. Matthew 22. A third definition here for marriage in this 1828 Webster's Dictionary is, in a scriptural sense, the union between Christ and His church by the covenant of grace, Revelation 19. So here you have the definition from Webster's 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language. And nothing has changed. Unchangeable, this thing about marriage. We haven't changed. People haven't changed. And when I read this 1828 dictionary, that tells me how I want to live in the year 2015 and beyond. No changes. Nothing. I don't participate in the change. You keep your change to yourself, please, yeah? And when it comes to the issue of marriage, have you ever wondered, what would Jesus do? Well, let me answer this question by asking you a question. I want you to answer me one question. 
one single simple question Jesus once asked some Pharisees who also had some issues with the institution of marriage. Let's read these verses together in Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 4 to 6. Jesus answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Think about it this way. Jesus is outside of our little modern box. In just one remark, Jesus affirms creation. Jesus affirms that we have been created as man and woman, and not as some neutral, interchangeable gender. Jesus affirms marriage as the lifelong union between one man and one woman, and that divorce is wrong. Jesus affirms the authority of the Scriptures by asking, Have ye not read? Well, my friend, have you? Let's get our answers from Scriptures. Because a society that depends on the government to tell them what marriage is, that society has run out of answers. We need directions from God and not from out-of-control, arrogant judges who try to play God. We don't need answers from media stars or other self-important groups or individuals. All I can say in these last days is, good to be saved. Amen. <laughs>